Hello, in this video, I'm gonna explain how to solve efficiency problems involving energy. Uh, first of all, our content and language objectives. The content objective is I can calculate efficiency for energy problems. Uh, the language objective is I can write about what happens when efficiency is not 100% considering the law of conservation of energy. Uh, so first of all, what is efficiency? Efficiency is the percent of energy that you end up with compared to the energy that you started with. And so how do you calculate percent efficiency is you take your energy out divided by energy in times 100. Uh, there are no units for this. It is just a percentage uh, that you come up with as an answer. Uh, steps for solving efficient efficiency problems. First, uh, you want to determine what type or types of energy you start with and what you finish with. Uh, two, you're going to calculate those starting and ending values. And then three, you're going to plug into that efficiency equation that we just talked about energy out divided by energy in times 100. Uh, so let's take a look at an example problem. What it says here is if a one kilogram ball is dropped from 22 meters and is traveling seven meters per second right before hitting the ground, uh, what is the efficiency for this scenario? The questions that I'd ask uh, to start is to start and end, is the object off the ground? Is it moving? Is there a spring involved? Is there a push or a pull? And that'll tell you if you have potential energy, kinetic energy, elastic potential energy or work. So beforehand, the object is off the ground. It's 22 meters off the ground. And so in this scenario, you're beginning with potential energy. The ball's not moving, there's no spring, there's no push or pull uh, to begin. And so you just have potential energy uh, as your energy before. Afterwards, uh, you don't have the object off the ground. It's just that split second before it hits the ground. Uh, the object is moving, so you have kinetic energy. Again, there are no springs, there's no work uh, because there are no pushes or pulls involved. And so what you've got is, as an energy in is potential energy, which you can solve by taking mass times gravity times height. Your energy out, you have kinetic energy, which is one half times mass times velocity squared. What we do is just grab the values that are provided here. If, if you have trouble calculating potential or kinetic energy, I've made videos explaining how to calculate energy. Uh, there are also videos on conservation of energy if you struggle with those concepts. Uh, but potential energy, you would take your mass, one times gravity, I just use 10 times height, 22, to come up with a energy in or beginning energy of 220 joules. Your energy out is kinetic energy, one half times mass times velocity squared, or one half times one times seven squared. And again, when you work through that problem, you come up with 24.5 joules. So how do you calculate efficiency? That's the last step here. You take energy out divided by energy in times 100. Energy out is the energy you end up with. At the end of some scenario, energy in is what you begin with. And so what you do here is take 25, uh, 4.5 divided by 200. Uh, take that quantity times 100. And the efficiency you end up with is 12.25%. Uh, so how do you end up with you know 87.75% of your energy disappearing? Uh, the answer to that is work. You have friction, you have forces that are acting on this object. So conservation of energy explains energy can't be lost or gained. But if you're looking at just the potential energy, just the kinetic energy in some scenario, uh, solving efficiency problems uh, is just one step added on top of calculating energy in and energy out. Uh, that's the end of this video going over efficiency and how to calculate energy problems. If you have any questions, please stop by during our homework help hours or any period 1A. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.